I'm with Mitch Resnick at the Bet Show 2019. Can you tell me why you're here? Well, it's always great to learn more about what educators around the world are doing with new technologies. You know, we get so inspired by you know, seeing and hearing all the different creative ways that teachers are using new technologies in their classrooms, and Bet is a great place to, to find out about all those new things. It's also an opportunity for us to spread the word about some of the things that we're working on in our group at the MIT Media Lab. As you know, we just released a new generation of our Scratch software. It's called Scratch 3.0. So I gave a presentation yesterday where I talked about some of the new things that are made possible with our new generation of Scratch, and it's great to get a chance to talk to teachers about ways they might make use of some of the new possibilities with Scratch 3.0. Can you give me some concrete instances of what Scratch, the new Scratch can do that the other one couldn't and how you're moving forwards? Well, one thing is the new generation of Scratch is designed you know, with mobile devices in mind. The previous generation was designed a while ago before mobile devices were so widespread. So the new generation works well on, you can create projects on tablets, run projects on your phones. Also we designed this new generation of Scratch in a more modular way so it's easy to continue to add what we call Scratch extensions. These are collections of programming blocks to add extra features to Scratch. So it's starting out with a collection of these extensions already, and there'll be more over time. So right now, if you look at your initial library of extensions, there's some ways of connecting to things in the physical world. So you can now use Scratch to control your Lego robotics, or you can use it to get input from your microbit controller. There are also connections through these extensions to different web services. So you can use uh, an extension for doing text-to-speech. You can now type in text, have your Scratch characters speak out loud. That's using some technology from Amazon. There's also a translate extension. So you can have your characters talk in any different language using an extension from Google. Wow. And can you tell me about the, the social web? behind all this because I know there's a platform out there so are you sort of pushing this out into the mobile sphere as well in terms of having a platform uh, like uh, Twitter or Instagram that's mirrored well, well, well first of all I think the social side of Scratch has always been important from the very beginning when we first launched Scratch back in 2007 we launched not just a programming language but an online community so that right from the beginning, we saw it was important for children to be able to share their projects with others and to see what other kids were creating. And I think it was the first programming language to be integrated with the social, you know, online community. Uh, and that's been a, an incredibly important part of the Scratch experience. We hear many kids say they come to Scratch to work on projects, they stay because of the community. And the community, first of all, serves as an audience. If a kid creates a project in Scratch and they share it in the community, that other kids can provide feedback and suggestions and encouragement. Um, so you know, it serves as a way for kids to have an audience for what they're creating. At the same time, the community serves as inspiration. So kids look at what's on the online community. There's now more than 40 million projects have been shared. So when kids look at the online community, they can get inspired by what others are creating, and that sparks ideas for what they might want to do. It also serves as a place for collaboration. Like about 25% of the projects on Scratch are results of remixes, where kids start with someone else's project, but add new code or new images to it to create their own project. So the creativity on Scratch comes from the constant sharing and collaborating in the Scratch online community. Yeah, and I'm, I'm also more inst interested in about the real life ex extensibility. Are there any um, sort of projects you know that involve people meeting up in real life and sharing stuff or doing stuff around the world? Well, first of all, we do think that you know, in-person interaction is important. First of all, the fastest growing part of Scratch is in schools, where kids are used in schools with other people, you know, physically as well. So lots of kids are now using it, probably half of the use of Scratch is in schools, where kids are doing it in places where they're with others. Also, we create, we have events like called Scratch Day, where kids come together to share and learn with and from one another. We started the first Scratch Day at MIT about 10 years ago, 
and it was so successful having kids come together. Many of them had met each other online, and then they met in person at MIT for Scratch Day. And it was great to see the way that they were able to work together and learn from one another. So we started a site and we encouraged other places to run their own Scratch Day events. We showed, here's how we did Scratch Day. You can use these ideas or create your own approach for Scratch Day. Last year, there's now an annual event called Scratch Day. We run our Scratch Day in May. Many other people do it at the same time of year. Others might do it at a different time. Last year, there were more than a thousand Scratch Days in more than 60 countries around the world. Thank you. And can you just tell me where people can go who don't know anything about Scratch? So if you just come to the Scratch website, scratch.mit.edu, that's a place that you can dive right in and start creating with Scratch and also learn more about, this, about Scratch. Thank you so much.